this episode, I researched the real king of the jungle, the species of man that the 1975 movie The Mighty Peking Man was named after. This species of man inhabited the cave 500 to 700,000 years ago. What kind of species was the Peking man? What did he look like? How did he think? And how was he similar to humans today? And how was he different? I explore these questions and more on this episode of The Mighty Peking Man of the Jungle. You're watching Cryptid Cryptids with me, your host, Jenna Bosiger. And if you're like me and you like cryptids, then don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like for this video. I really do appreciate it. Now about the Peking Man. The Mighty Peking Man is the name of a 1975 movie based in China about a giant undiscovered Bigfoot type creature living deep in the jungle. The title of this movie, which translates to Gorilla King in Chinese, was based on the discoveries made from the ancient man site at the Jacodian Cave located just 30 miles outside of the capital of China in Beijing, also known as Peking. I find it interesting that the most populated city in China, I mean maybe in the world, has a history of human types living there around Beijing, China, going back five to seven hundred thousand years. I mean, as far as we know, that's as far as we know, it could be even farther back. So after they found the first fossil tooth in the Jacodian cave, it says it since became the most productive Homo erectus site in the world. And this is coming from the worldheritagesite.org. And they also say that the Peking man belonged to a species of bipedal hominids who shared physical similarities and differences with humans. These differences make them a different species of humans. Similar to humans, but different, not actual humans. According to TravelChina.com, at the Peking Man site, there's an Upper Caveman site, and then there's a New Caveman site. And archaeologists confirm this site as the habitat of Peking Man. A complete skull fossil has placed them that far back in time and has the site has now become known as home of the ape man. In the upper caveman site, near a peak called Dragon Bone Hill, there was a ancient man that was said to have lived 18,000 years ago. And then the new caveman site, they found evidence of human, of a species of humans living there 100,000 years ago. And then at the entrance of the Ape Man Cave, archaeologists have confirmed that the fossils discovered in the area are remains of several different species of ancient deer that lived in the middle of the Pleistocene period. Peking Man had a skull that was flat in profile with a small forehead a keel along the top of his head for attachment of powerful jaw muscles, very thick skull bones, heavy brow, bridge, heavy brow ridges, and an occipital torus, a large palate, and a large chinless jaw, says Britannica.com. And at Psy.org, I started getting into some fascinating material about the Peking man's brain. They made an endocast, which is an impression taken from the inside of the cranium that reflects, that reflects the external features of the brain anatomy in detail. And using these methods, a scientist named Wu was able to calculate absolute and relative volumes and surface areas of two hemispheres for this study using the near six complete crania 
from the Peking man also discovered at the cave. And although this evidence suggests that the Peking man might exhibit a left hemisphere larger than the right hemisphere, studies restricted to the traditional methods of examination were not able to examine these parameters. <clears throat> I really think that having different parts of the brain bigger than ours would have a really big effect on a species behavior and activities and thought patterns and they would be very different than humans even though they looked similar in a lot of ways and maybe were even able to mate but the way they're describing this this homo erectus species that was alive during a time when there were giant creatures on the planet. They're describing this human creature as not human. He's not just a large human, he's different. Similar, but different. And this is really my opinion because at the nearby Jacodian site museum, upon entering, you will see a tall Peking man statue with prey on his shoulder and a stick in his right hand, but at the museum really pushes the evolution theory. And to quote, and to quote, those exhibitions mainly include fossils of the Peking man and other animal bones demonstrating the origin of creatures in prehistory and the transition from ape to human. I'm going to be doing a video about evolution soon. In fact, it kind of started getting mixed into this one and I had to separate them out. But I'm going to separate that out and keep that Keep that in another video, the whole evolution thing, but they do really push it. As I said, this uh, picture, I believe, comes from the museum itself. And save that up. Save that for another time. Oh, yeah. One more thing worth mentioning is that all of this original material of the bones of the giant skeletons and the teeth, well, except for two teeth, all of it, the skulls, all of it was stolen sometime during the period 1941 to 1945. Guess where it was headed when it disappeared without a trace? If you guess the Smithsonian, you were right. Imagine that. Maybe that was too easy. But according to an article coming from smithsonian.com, and I quote, During World War II, Chinese authorities packed up the fossils to send them to the United States for safekeeping. The bones were supposed to be transported to a U.S. Marine base and then shipped off. Instead, the fossils vanished, and no one knows what really happened to them. I find that an interesting thing to say that no one knows what really happened to them. Why wouldn't the author just say no one knows what happened to them? They said nobody really knows because we all know, but we can't prove it. Okay, so, you know, in my research of the Peking Man, something came up from Ancestors.com in an article called Peking giants 15 feet tall. It says, the Chinese, in whose land archaeologists have found some of the earliest skeletal remains of giants, insist that once they had among them men as much as 15 feet tall. One might dismiss this as just another tall tale, except that Melchior Nunez, in his letter from India, vouches for the fact that China grew some of the some giants to that tremendous size, unquote. And then in this quick search for more about Peking giants, 
I found a recent article, and this article is in every major news source from CNN, CBS, BBC, stated from 2021. And this article says archaeologists in eastern China have found 5,000-year-old skeletons of people experts say would have been unusually tall and strong. It went on to say, a massive skull found in China they call Dragon Man. The extraordinary fossil has been named a new species of humans, Homo Longi, or Dragon Man, by Chinese researchers. A well-preserved skull cap found in the Chinese city of Harbin is between 138 thousand years and 309,000 years old. Geochemical analysis combines primitive features such as a broad nose, a low brow, and a brain case with those that are more similar to Homo sapiens including flat and delicate cheekbones. They say that they would have had an extremely wide face, deep eyes with large eye sockets, big teeth, and a brain similar in size to modern humans. So was Dragon Man a giant? Homo Longi is also heavy built. Very robust, they say, says Professor Jin Zijin Ni. It is hard to estimate the height, but the massive head should match a height higher than that of the average of modern humans. Go on and I quote, his wide bulbous nose allowed him to breathe his wide bulbous nose allowed him to breathe huge volumes of air indicating a high energy lifestyle while sheer size would have helped him withstand the brutally cold winters in this region end quote Xinhua news agency reported our family our human family tree that points to a previously unknown sister group more closely related to modern humans than neanderthals China also has a fossil record of a creature called Gigantopithecus, a large bipedal ape creature that is said to have been very non-aggressive. And a lot of people like to say that that is where Bigfoot comes from. Uh, but I don't know why they don't maybe say he could have been a Peking man or some of these other ancient... He, he, some of these ancient species more similar to humans, but instead they chose a very ape-like creature. That's going to do it for this episode about the real Peking man of China. And thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, bye!